This is the Go Maluku podcast. Thank you so much, man. Thank you so much for for joining the the, the podcast, and I'm looking really looking forward to having this conversation with you. Before we and this is the funny thing is is before you um, before we yeah we started to record, you sent me a, a link, a video link of of a of a song, and yeah. I didn't know what to expect, so I hit it, and I immediately. I'm hooked, man. Like I, I love this. Um, like I, sh- I should pronounce it uh, correct. Hijo del sol, hijo yeah. del sol luminoso, which which is means son of the uh, sun. Yeah. yeah, by Joe uh, Vasconcelos. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. All right. T- t- tell me more a little bit. Well, like, why did you? Because I love the song, by by the way, and I'll I'll put it, definitely put it in in the in the show notes and all the other music because it's a little bit reggae ska kind of kind of uh, music that he plays but the song itself that you, that you send um has a very significant meaning yes it is well um it's a mixture of, of uh, styles but the most important style is um, um some andean uh, music style with, uh, the we call samponias uh, these are what with the um, in, instrument of music and also the rhythm. You can uh, listen this kind of rhythm, rhythm um, in the Andean zone, so in Peru, in the northern west of Argentina, in Bolivia, of course, and in the northern of Chile. Right. This song, uh, it's about um, to reivindicate the um, origin, the Andean origin of the man here in America, I mean the the continent called America, because uh, here in Spanish we call America to the whole continent, not only to the United States. Mm. And it, it's about also to valorize and to put value, strong value of our origins, and to say we have the power of the sun, and then. Uh, um, the origin of this uh, South American uh, Andean man is from the high altitude you know, right here, which is n- next to the sun. And that's mm-hmm. uh, the the strongest message of the song. Right, because when you said uh, um, um, you sent a link and you talked about the the the, the sun of this the how do you call it like the, the son of the sun um i immediately had to reflect back to um your uh your remarks at cop 25 uh, so um, you, you, you also talked a little bit a little bit about solar i i i remember solar energy um at, at the at the people's plenary you remember that one and also at the high level uh, uh plenary um yeah high level meeting that you were um a one of the keynote speakers too um, yeah, explain a little bit because you said about something uh, about the was it the dangers of of solar? Is is that what you, you talked about? How to forget it? Yeah, that uh, instances in COP twenty five and also with the um, plenary of the NGOs and the civil society, which I'm very glad to be invited by you. So thank you. I say you publicly. <laughs> How to forget it? Yeah, most of the the subject is about the consequences around the uh, renewal energies. Mm. Um, simply, it's just well, you have the sources like here, the San Tainti, and also the well, yeah, the volcano source, the geothermal source of energy, which is very powerful, developed mm-hmm. by Italians engineers, and we have a very important uh, complex here in the north of, Ch- north of Chile called Cerro Pabellón, which I have a uh, visit um, sometimes. And all um, the energy from the sea, um, the energy from the wind that you have a, a lot in Europe, must say, must mention. Uh, however, you have to transport that kind of energy um, or you have to store that kind of energy. So how uh, how to do that? Well, we have the um, green <laughs> um, hydrogen, <laughs> and we have also the batteries of lithium. Mm. Where that 
and you have to transport also uh, copper and many other um, commodities or uh, natural resources, metallic and non-metallic resources. Mm -hmm. The question is, where are they? Which is the source of this kind of minerals and non-minerals? Well, they are in indigenous territories here in South America, also in Africa, mm. and well, even in, in, the, in North America. So um, this is a um, high um, side of the renewable energies um, in order to reach a real and a significant um, energy transition process. Um, you have to um, extract this kind of, of natural resources. So uh, are we going to, you know, destroy indigenous territory i don't want it to but it's a strong problem right now and it's not so uh visible mm. so this is a, a very uh, high um, important issue i think we can um, uh, elaborate by the engineering side of the of the knowledge and practices uh, more sustainable um, in general, in order to uh, have the enough um, natural resources, but from the indigenous sides and the environmentalist um, uh, climate action and also, and also conservation movements, mm -hmm. uh, I think we have to address this very strong right now. And I don't see many efforts on that or something uh, more focus on this uh, i'm not uh, giving the guilty to any anyone it's just a problem mm -hmm. and i think um, we should uh, say okay we want all um, all around the planet if we don't want to reach the two celsius degree if we we really want to stop at 1.5 celsius degree as uh, global warming mm -hmm. we have to put this on the table and say okay uh, we cannot destroy this kind of environments of indigenous peoples because they are uh, reservoir, you know, it's, um, carbon stockage places. Mm -hmm. So how we can get this kind of natural resources in order to not destroy our stockage uh, carbon places, which are also indigenous territories. So I think we have to rebuild, rethink, re-engineering the energy transition definitely but that's my my vision no i i, I absolutely agree with it and, and i think it is also something that people don't realize is that they don't they all call for solar energy or, or wind or whatever uh but like to make those solar power plants or to create those batteries um you do need resources and those resources come come from somewhere and usually they're from indigenous lands i remember there was a um, I don't know if you've seen it too. There was a petition from the indigenous peoples from Russia uh, a while ago. Um, um, Elon Musk um, he he went to he wanted to create a uh, uh, excavated no not excavated but a site in on indigenous lands um, which was um, yeah rich of lithium. Um, so and which is very um, much needed for these batteries for the these, these Tesla cars. So there's there's Definitely that, that something that people don't see um, when it comes to these energy transitions that these resources need to come from somewhere. Um, but it is important that, um, yeah, that, that these resources are, or that the indigenous peoples are respected and then their rights are respected. Um, yeah, that, that's what, what I, what I, um, um, I don't know. Yeah, yeah, your remarks at, at the COP 5 were, were, were very important and very interesting. And by the way, um, just get, I have to hand it to you. Like how you handled the people's cop. Um, my, my, yeah, congratulations, man. It's been two years ago, definitely. But um, um, doing it in a long what was time. It? English, Spanish, French, Portuguese. Like how many languages do you know, man? Like it, it was it's pretty amazing what you did. I have to answer this question um, in this way. Maybe with will sound um, different, but I have to say it. You know, the most important language that uh, 
I think we have to manage mm. is the language of soul, language of heart, in order to connect as humans. And then, yeah, it's important to speak uh, while well, English for the its international significance, and then Spanish and French. Well, it's the it's a very diplomatic language, and, and each language uh, allows you mm -hmm. to to think, to elaborate thoughts in a different way, which are very uh, rich in an intellectual um, approach. Right. So, uh, well, about all three, um, I speak um, some um, intermediate level of Aymara, which is the um, mother language of my culture. Mm. And then, um, well, a little bit of Portuguese because it's it's next to the very pro, very close to the Spanish, and then I would like to to learn Italian. Yeah, <laughs> and also I'm learning Aymara all the time. Uh, are you wanting to learn Italian because Italian won the European Cup, or is, it, is, is this was this a a a wish that was long before that? Uh, it was before that because <laughs> um, you know when I was living in Europe, mm. um, I I met some Italian friends and I have always a good time with them so uh, they told me come to Italy to Flor um, Firenze, uh, Milano, uh, Venice uh, and I say I can because I want to return to Chile to my homeland mm -hmm. and if I go to Italia or Italy uh, I think I will not come back to my country because I will love everything <laughs> <laughs> that's that's for sure right what, what, what did you do uh, when you went uh, while you were in Europe? Well, you know, um, um, it was a, a kind of story because I was finishing my bachelor's degree in biology mm. in Santiago, Chile. And I was working in environmental engineering faculty. And then I, I just realized that in order to address an um, environmental or climate problem, um, science is not enough mm. as an approach. You need a social approach, a political approach. So I, I um, um, apply to a program of uh, political science in France. Of, um, uh, it's called Sciences Po, uh, the university. Mm -hmm. And I, I got in. I explained while well, I'm doing some environmental studies and, and I'm very interested in bioethical too and they accept me uh, I was the only biologist there and the mm. first one and it was amazing then uh, I realized that in France the education or the higher education is a um, human right so anyone can uh, um, study there and got a, a diploma a, a bachelor or a master degree so I just continue um, um, uh, studying, in, I got my Bachelor of Biology there and also um, a Master of Arts in, in Political Science and also a, a Master in Environmental uh, Science. Right. And then I started to work and then COP21 arrives and then I met you. Maybe you don't uh, uh, remember, but I made your questions also uh, another brothers and sisters. Um, I remember Frank also. Mm. Yeah, it was amazing because uh, it was a hard time. I remember when I was when I was accredited, I was uh, accredited by my country, Chile, as mm. a delegate, and so I have the right to go to the uh, some previous um, previous um, um, Paris Agreement reduction time. Mm. So I was um, uh, putting stronger as as stronger as I can. Uh, the needed to have um, indigenous uh, rights on the agree in the agreement, and I then realized that there are all, there are um, a group of indigenous the, the indigenous um, forum of, on, on climate change, mm. and I met you all. So it was a, a, a very great time. How how was your um? No, let me, let me start off with the with, with the easier one um, is. So when did you when did you realize? Can you explain a little bit more? Because I find it fascinating um, that you 
first you start at, at, at a bachelor of, uh, of, as, a, as a biologist and then what was the experience that made you realize I also have to go through political science? Well, you know, in the scientific field, in, in the natural scientific fields, life science, you say, uh, well, this leaf makes uh, photosynthesis. Mm -hmm. And then we have in the land and the field, we have biogeochemical cycles of uh, carbon, uh, nitrogen, etc. And that kind of language is uh, a streak. If you say something, it, it's that something. Mm. However, in the real, well, in the real world, um, sometimes a word means many things, and it depends about the interpretation of who are reading. This is mm. this is a stronger in the in the I say real world, and in order to achieve to communicate you well and to elaborate um, a good um, a way to put the, a problem on the table mm. you need more language and also uh, I, social and political uh, preparation formation mm. or training so here in Chile the 2010 the, the, the year I, I want to I start my journey to Europe uh, we were a lot of environmental issues as um, a dam, which is called Hydra Sand Project, which it means to put um, a lot of water with a dam in a indigenous territory and also um, a very pristine um, um, field in the Patagonia, which is um, a very um, important. Uh, land for a stockage of carbon also and a lot of um, a source of a lot of biodiversity so um, in order to argue to make our arguments um, for preserving this um, reject this project uh, I realized that um, the language of uh, social science and also political science are essential or fundamental mm. that was uh, the point that was the moment and when um so, so you uh as a biologist as as a so there are three things actually that make make, make you like a triangle right you're indigenous you're also <laughs> like a, a environmental bio, biologist but also you have also some you know political science background diplomacy um which is especially when it comes to climate change uh, or, or let, let's use Paris an, as an example. Um, how was that received uh, when you when you went into the Chilean delegation and you want to explain something about, I don't know, uh, carbon or solar or rights? Um, was it was it easy to or, or hard to um, yeah get your uh, your expertise known to your delegation? Where I start answering this question as um, a very famous song, which I very like about uh, Simple Red, and mm. it's money is tough to mention. Well, climate is tough to mention. Mm. <laughs> well, what I what I mean is, yeah, you can have arguments. You you could have um, you know facts. Uh, the IPCC reports uh, are kind of a you know strong um, evidence of that. Mm -hmm. And also you can um, study or figure out which is the national, in this case, Chilean context. And we are strong in renewable energies. Um, so the interest of, the, of, the, uh, of Chile, I think, is uh, to put this as strong as, as it can, as, as possible, the renewable energies in uh, international um, level. Mm -hmm. However, we come back to the um, uh, first issue that we mentioned about the the consequence of renewable energy. Um, so yeah, it is, it was, and it is um, very difficult to address this um, as a scientist and also as a indigenous. Yeah, for sure. Right. Yeah, it's. Um... 
you you said something about um, in 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 the in the in the conversation that we had before before we went uh, started recording um, about uh, the relevance of indigenous practices and knowledge uh, in, into science. Um, yeah, it it is something that is for a lot of people is is like abracadabra. Um, <laughs> no, <laughs> damn. <laughs> That's bad. But it isn't. Uh, can you exp can you um, yeah? What what's your take on it? Well, um, you know we have to understand that science is very uh, from the normal point of view for, as a citizen. You know, um, it's a very um, square and very um, regulated uh, language. Mm -hmm. So uh, you. Um, Sometimes for someone who is um, just um, making the, his work or her work on, on the field, just growing plants or growing potatoes, as, as here it happens a lot, and then you come to explain them, okay, this process is about, um, you know, uh, the potatoes will grow on the ground and then you have to to put some water in, in this frequency, it could be got as an aggressive um, practice. Mm. It does a lot because here and other indigenous lands or local community territories, uh, you have a know-how um, by a traditional way. So in this context, um, how to make um, science present without violence, without aggressivity mm. pursued by the farmers or um, indigenous um, local people. Well, I really think, and this is part of my, my work now, um, you have to establish a dialogue between the indigenous practices, local communities practices, all um, most over in the um, countries I feel mm -hmm. and some concepts of science you know a dialogue uh, mm -hmm. across talking and in this context science uh, um, is an invited or it's invited to to the dialogue and the and the landlord is, is the indigenous practices or, the, or local community practices we're working this um a little bit at the university of Tarapacá, and also with other um uh, movements here um, and also uh, foundations and ngos we will have the first um talking next uh, july 27th so uh, i invite you all uh, to come <laughs> mm, it's, it's virtual um yeah, it's virtual. July twenty seventh. All right, it of is. Course. So, so yeah, explain a bit, um, then the the work that you do at at the university, um, trying to b build that dialogue. How how does that look like? Well, if we're um, focusing or concentrated on two uh, practices of our Mara people, where uh, which I belong to. Mm -hmm. These practices are about the culture uh, of potatoes, which is uh, strongly linked to um, Aymara um, uh, ritual, which is called um, which is called um, Pachayampe, which is um, a ceremony um, to start the growing of potatoes underground. Mm. Um, this kind of practice use in a very sustainable way, as we say in the occidental approach, um, the water. So it's very uh, special the way that the, the, the hydric um, resource is used. It's very um, normalized, there are a, a know-how how to do it. And also there are a know-how how to in a way to adapt to different zones because as you see here mm -hmm. uh, we have a you know a kind of territory but if we see the the, the small mountain the, the climb 
we have another territory. So it's very interesting the 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 way that these practices and this know-how of mm. indigenous peoples uh, adapt to different uh, scenarios. Right. So that's a uh, that's very uh, rich in terms of knowledge. Mm. So how to explore that uh, with some uh, scientific concepts, but always I have to say science uh, act, um, plays a role as an um, invited, you know, it's not the, it's not the landlord. Mm -hmm. Got it. Yeah. And, and the other uh, practice is uh, about to preserve uh, humid zones in the Andean flat region, because if you uh, preserve you know, the water of these humid zones, you're going to preserve all the biodiversity there, and you have to to make possible the the presence of, of water and the underground water and, and surface water mm -hmm. in order to preserve this. And there are some practices to um, address this and put more significant. Um, effects on this uh, in preservation. Right. So our uh, focus is on on this. We are in the in the first stage. So um, we are very motivated with this. Yes, sounds like, um, and I think um, that this that dialogue that, that you're creating is is one hundred percent super important. And um, maybe just picking your brain because uh, I, I I run into a similar problem. Is it's created that dialogue, right? Um, you know that I'm not a biologist. I, I'm I'm nowhere near your level ex of expertise in, in, in terms of environmental biology. Uh, the only thing that I know is um, w one thing: I'm a moron, and second, I only know human rights and I know international law. That's the only only thing that That's I know. That is great. <laughs> to a certain extent, yes. Um, how? But when uh, the the problem is is the translation to make so that making people understand, all right, um, we as indigenous peoples, we have our, our knowledge and at the other side of the table, maybe at the Chilean government or, or, or a delegation, um, they don't understand it. So how do you, when you talk about a dialogue or, or maybe you experienced it in, in, in Madrid or in Paris, um, how can, how do you, um, make the translation for, for, for people or help Great them? Great question. Great question. And every day I got a little more about the answer. So <laughs> let me tell you, <laughs> not for real. <laughs> well, we have to put this in context. Uh, I just um, tell you a little bit about how to make a dialogue between um, ancestral or autochthon or indigenous mm. knowledge, practices and science well, um, already to translate or to vulgarize, to divulgate scientific understanding of climate change or environment is already difficult. So difficult for the, the um, decision makers. Mm -hmm. So there are very important scientists in Chile um, who are in charge of this. And I started to have um, uh, some talks with them. And yeah, it's very difficult. And it's even more difficult to speak with the scientists and the decision makers with a little bit or, or with a focus in, with a factor about science and indigenous practices. It's even mm. more difficult. So what um, I have discovered until now well, you have to put in context everything and adapt um, an issue, a problem, and then uh, to speak around it. Around it. For example, um, in this um, issue about the renewals uh, energies, um, yeah, you can put the efficiency uh, to have energy from the sun or, or the other sources, the efficiency that we have copper, we have leaf here. However, um, how the, the question uh, to uh, start, you know, the explanation from 
more from science is, well, how long and how much will our lens resist the extraction of these commodities? Mm -hmm. If the price is good um, internationally in the budget system, you know, in the monetary system, and then when that is a stress, you can present some you know, local practices and then try to make figure out all that you can integrate, not combine, mm. but to integrate this kind of approaches as a solutions. Because right. the main point here is to arrive, is to reach um, a transitional energy process, energy transition process, mm -hmm. but without exterminate our, our lands, you know. So that is the main focus. And maybe it's difficult to make um, to make them, uh, it will have sense to, to different stakeholders. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's uh, always challenging. Yeah, it is, it is um, most of the times they, they, they ask for, for examples, you know, like, and, um, and examples that, uh, so, so like how, how, how do the indigenous peoples in, in Latin America or how do the Aymara people, how, how do, do they uh, mitigate climate, climate change? Um, it's all these, um, yeah, the, these examples that, that they're asking. And the only thing that I can do is talk about principles and point to examples, but it's, um, it's I don't feel that it is in my place to, Oh, no, yeah, yeah, definitely. First of all, it, it's not in, in my place to, to talk about the examples of the Aymara, Aymara people, because that's people like yourself um, uh, to, to, do, to do that. Um, but it is, yeah, it, it's, it's, it's a challenge, actually, that that, um, that I'm glad that uh, you you are able to, you're also chipping away, um, you know, also a also little bit little try, um, figuring out like how to explain it to people I would go into that dialogue it's it's not only between science and indigenous knowledge but also as you've seen cop 21 cop 25 it is also uh, science indigenous knowledge and diplomacy uh, or politics um, that, that you want uh, to, to combine or make these these negotiators to 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 understand it uh, I think it, uh, um, a better way to I would like to say it mm. more that combine is to integrate. Because right. when you combine, maybe maybe in English or in another language, you say, well, I will combine, you know, uh, this and this to the floor with X. Mm -hmm. And it's not about it. It's about to integrate. I have this knowledge. I have this other knowledge. And I have this kind of a way that we can negotiate how to integrate. That is the diplomacy. This is maybe ancestral knowledge. This is the... The engineering and the science knowledge. Mm. So I think we have to to integrate them as an engine, but a natural engine and very human engine. Yeah. Right. Right. Oh yeah. I I, I understand now, and it's it's almost uh, um, the way that I li I'm listening to you is that you as a, as a scientist you also think about things like legally, as in as in like I use combine. But you just say integrate because it has, has a different meaning. So you, you have this legal understanding of, of words, in, or words have obviously have, have a different meaning. When you talk about indigenous knowledge, right, and, and when you talk about the preservation of it, um, are you, do you think that um, um, things are happening enough to, um, yeah, to protect uh, um, indigenous cultures practices? In, um, what what you're doing right now, obviously, but also, let's say in your work, university curricula, is is is, is it, um, it what needs to be improved? Second great question. Well, where can I start? And <laughs> where I can end? Wherever you want, man. Okay, let's put uh, this like. One thing is to divulgate, or as French said, to vulgarize science knowledge to people, citizenship, and then decision makers or another stakeholder sectors. However, and not always you can see 
difference between divulgation of science and education, science mm -hmm. education. I work on science education some weeks ago, some two weeks ago, or three weeks ago, we mm -hmm. were, um, it was happening the third international education uh, conference on it, on climate change and sustainability organi co-organized by University of Chile. I was mm -hmm. attending and I have to say, um, there are many wonderful words. However, they are more, they are more um, focused in science innovation, mm. organization, not in education necessarily. As I un understood the education um, last year, education is about the experience you have in the classroom or outdoor as you, you can use this as a as a classroom you know this is great 100%. i can explain you i can explain you many things mm -hmm. we're not to touch many things now but this experience in the classroom here it happens the pedagogy the um learning uh, process and because you you are teaching mm -hmm. and from here you have to give the most important scientific and human concept to you know the students or the people and then you can uh, ask them what they know about what they imagine how to use to apply them and then make works in small groups or personal um, work on the field and then to guide them to lead that uh, learning process mm. and then to arrive to the scientific level of maybe as a article scientific ar analysis of a scientific article that you already as a student has the knowledge or the notion about what is science what is uh, is made for what you can do it with that maybe what you cannot do it what science does not know because mm. science cannot explain all <laughs> that's important right and so in order to um, to answer your question um we have to, uh, in order to have a better curricula or better education climate education uh, results uh, as climate action mm -hmm. This is the that is the goal to have climate action permanently from citizenship um, we have to to make more or to put a stronger development on the learning experience inside the classroom not only in in science divulgation right that's kind of answer yeah um and then yeah definitely ma makes a lot of sense and it, I just the way you're looking at your background, man, it, it is um, like, as I think right now, like almost like the education system around the world is fundamentally flawed. And when you come, when you talk about biology, like they learn biology from books, uh, whereas, or geology or, or whereas, yeah, just go outside and, and be with people like yourself and, and, and um, yeah, listen to you or elders to explain the lands and 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 all the the flora and fauna and everything else and i think um well, we have so much to improve uh, i would say, i would think you know it's uh, it's it's almost like feels like like we're so distant from 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 the land um now nowadays um de definitely given the technological advances that that we've made um whereas we also want to preserve the planet whereas yeah you don't you don't learn um how to preserve the planet through zoom um even though i i this is an amazing backdrop and it's, it's amazing to learn from you however it is also important to yeah to be on the land right to have it have it in, in your in your hands definitely um freddie when you um talk to me about uh some what you um you've been to cop 21 in paris you've been to madrid um uh cop 26 is up ahead hopefully in person in glasgow or hopefully hopefully 
Um, I hope you're, you're going. Um, what do you, what do you, um, yeah, what are your experiences? What are your, expect, maybe expectations as well of uh, um, what we like to see come out of that, all that? Okay, I will change my position. Oh. Because my, my legs are my muscle. <laughs> but also, but also to show you a little bit more about the background. Well, my experience first, maybe. Um, well, the international negotiation system of the United Nations framework on climate change. Um, it is complex. Maybe you understand better than me because, or, or, or many, many people, because you have studied and you have worked on that. Uh, however, I think it is possible to follow with a lot of, of preparation. However, even if you have an important or a significant uh, notion about this um, negotiations process or um, preparation of different conferences of the parties, you know, the climate summits, um, it is very um, slow the progress that you can see. I have the first uh, experience in a climate summit in COP21 where uh, the Paris Agreement was um, a very concrete product of this uh, work for many years. Mm -hmm. But not every uh, climate summit or climate um, negotiations process is about that. So um, what is, are my expectations now? There are many things in the um, have to be seen before the COP26. Um, we have the Article 8, Article 12. We have finance. Wow, some finances haven't been. Um, the system will review another sources of finance. And we have the, the Article 6. Um, my expectations are we could focalize or focus to, to focus the Article 6 more than the others. Mm -hmm. I don't think the others are less important. However, uh, the last uh, commas and points of the Paris Agreement are in the Article 6. So we have to fix it first mm -hmm. and then go on. Uh, here in Chile, um, by the way, we are in a political constitution reduction process. I and, saw. And most of the people is um, focusing this or concentrating on this. Um, however, we have a, a global kind of global agreement, kind of global constitution, we can say, uh, in a, somehow, which is Paris Agreement. So we have to change that reduction. Uh, I think that is the most important. Of course, my, my, my vision about it. So my expectancies are on that. Right. But by the way, um, I'm definitely looking forward to, to having you in Glasgow work together and, and fixing Article 6. Um, any, any thoughts on, like, because I, I, I heard that um, an indigenous lady is, is heading the constitutional review process. Um, are you looking forward to it? Any, any thoughts on that? Well, as you know, um, I got a audio WhatsApp message from a good friend and I wasn't listening to the inaugural or first session of this um, process mm -hmm. because I, I want to focus on on the facts, on the process itself, not only in the, you know, the, the ritual or the Republican acts or mm. process, but it's okay. Um, and this way, I really think, I really feel that to put a Mapuche woman or, or woman from the Mapuche indigenous people, which is the most important in, in Chile, and I think in Argentina too, mm. 
is um, it is more like um, a signal, a formal you know, signal, social signal to recognize uh, the work of indigenous people. However, I don't know, I'm not sure it will be have a significant effect on the, on the reduction itself, mm. no solution. But that's, uh, I can I can answer you, I can tell you. Right, yeah, and, and um, yeah, we're just curious about your, your thoughts on it. Obviously it's early and you know, we have to see about the, like you said, the facts, the, the product, like how, how would it look like and not necessarily having a indigenous uh, from the Mapuche uh, um, leading it um, shouldn't, be the, shouldn't be the win. Like it should be um, yeah, looking at like the, the final product of, of, the, of the constitutional review. Um, I'm, definitely, I'm definitely looking forward to tracking it. Um, it, it's, it is interesting because it's happening uh, in more, more places ar around the world. So uh, definitely, um, and it is you know interesting. Who, you know who is following it also? Uh, our friend Tomo. Oh yeah, he's following he's very everything, motivated and, man. And, and, yeah. and he's in Chile, so he's very motivated with that. Yeah, like it's um uh, uh, the fact that he's in Chile. Like, did you already meet him? Did you guys team up or, or have a coffee or something? Well, he was in um, Chile. Um, no, because he's in sadly not because he's two thousand kilometers um, oh. from here to the south. That I I hope to to do it very very often when I can reach the center of the country right is it how how, how long would it be um uh, do you would you drive to the to the city santiago de chile or was it um was no, it best to drive, to... No, not to drive but when i was uh, a, ch a child i i make the the travel with by bus and there are 30 hours you have to to be on the bus if not, you have to take the plane, and it's about two hours, uh, forty-five minutes to to reach Santiago from Arica. Arica is the northern, uh, Arica and Parinacota is the northern region of, of Chile. Right, thirty hours by bus. But what did you, what did you do uh, for thirty hours? Well, I was a child, so I was never, but never um, bored. Mm. I was always, um, you know, or writing or drawing or reading a book um, it was a great time to to sit down uh, on that um, um, bus to see the desert mm -hmm. and then to start to to see uh, that the that the field will is going to change to, to less desert more plants more green and then you arrive to Santiago is very different. So I really, I really appreciate the opportunity that I have to have family here in the north and also in the south, and because that made me figure um, about the different places of my country and then uh, the different places in South America. Right. Um, Freddie, I know you're a busy man, uh, and I'm super grateful for you for getting at least for, for at least having an hour to talk to me. L let's let's sit down um, soon uh, to talk more at length about your um, your biology, um, um, how would you say background, and dive deep more deeper into into it. Like I said, I'm 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 a newbie when it comes to biology and and science and everything else. Um, never believe it will be at your level. However, um, I do I do feel that I need to learn because um, because right. it, it it is yeah in some negotiations some processes it is um, yeah I get these questions that like I, I can that, that I can get away with with some with some answers that I always give um, so I do need some more some more capacity building on um, and environmental biology and and. What a concept, man! Capacity building. Yeah, um, you have to rock on this, definitely. Yeah, yeah, it def definitely, and and hopefully that uh, with with yeah. your help as well, man. Um, I would like to learn from you too, and I want to ask you a question if you allow me. Please, not please. Me, not for me, but for the young people of Chile, which are organizing them for climate action at the mm. COP. Oh, so right. we went to the COP Chile. Uh, Cop, G -G -Cop. Yeah. Uh, what will be 
what's your message for them to arrive at calm? What is the most important that, that they have to do or what is your recommendation for them? Thank you, Vasali. Um, thank you, and that's such, such a good question. Um, I think what is most important is to know where you come from. And it sounds very generic, but um, do know that where you come from, that you're indigenous, your own values and, 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 and who you represent. I think that is super important um, in, th in terms of your men mental state of mind. And I think that is, that is very important that you, uh, you should look through because um, you've been to COP, it is hectic. Um, it is super hectic. It is lo long days and very short nights, and um, you need to keep going. And uh, um, the only thing that I know that I can keep that keeps people going is knowing where you come from, and like what the intent is for you to 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 go to cop. So that that is important. Um, practical, um, obviously, is uh, patience. Uh, you need you need to have patience. Um, is that like, it, it's, it's, it's high, uh, it's, 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 a, it's a very high level environment, um, high pace, high speed uh, environment, um, but to get progress or, uh, or make any, any changes, you need to have, you need to be patient, uh, patience, uh, sorry, need to be patient or deploy patience, but you also need to keep pushing. Yeah, you know, so um, and and pushing is is definitely what you did, Freddie, and that's that's why I I love your work ethic, is just keep going, just keep going and go to all the meeting, accept all invitations to get 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 your message out, um, and I think for definitely for youth, um, it is super important to um, yeah, just to show that the tenacity, you know, like all right, we're here, we we want to contribute, we want to talk. And, and I think, um, yeah, with, uh, with the help of you and I'm willing to help as well, um, you know, I think uh, the, the, the Chilean indigenous youth can, can uh, make a lot of progress. And unfortunately, um, um, COP25 was held in Madrid. Otherwise we would have, had a, have I'm sure we would have great youth turnout in, in Chile. Uh, hopefully they'll be able to go to, to Glasgow and, um, yeah, and I think that is, that is super important, man. Um, just to uh, uh, be prepared um, for, for the high-speed environment that you will get go into, and by having a mental state of mind, um, knowing who you represent, who um, uh, who you are speaking for, and um, yeah, working hard and and being patient. I think that that's the most important lesson. And the rest, the rest will come by itself. You know, you don't need to. They, they don't need to be. Um, um, experts in international law or whatever, like that, that's, that's all. But that's uh, important if what you say, it is not necessary what is important to have a, a specialist as you. Um, I, I forgot to say something about it. Uh, yeah, I mentioned and I have a background, uh, academic background that, you know, the most important language and language is, is from soul, from heart. And we have to realize where we come from, as you said. And that's the most important, more than um, um, educational degrees. Oh, one hundred percent. You know, you you, you can um, edu educational degrees will only get you so far, uh, but but what will keep you going is knowing where you come from, and having that longer longer term vision. And um, like you said, you know, like having that, uh, uh, yeah, future view. Um, I think that that will definitely keep you going. Much better than than um, than a law degree or whatever. I think, think that's and by the way, like, like it it only um, it only gives you so much information to get you um, to get you um, to, to for you to survive in this in this environment. The rest is just trying an error, uh, trial and error, and and and, and learning and um, and I think and I think the best way that we, we can facilitate that as a caucus or as, as indigenous peoples is to help one another. So when the youth comes in, like like people, yeah, yourself, myself, or Tomo, you know, like that, all right, this is what's going on and, and this is what it's required and let's get to work. Just roll up your sleeves and, and let's get to work. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. It's game and many other 
live games, as we can say metaphorically, and we need um, playing as a group, family, um, playing alone is very chall most challenging. Yeah. Like to collaborate, definitely. 100%. And, and, and I'm glad you asked a question, and I'm glad that um, the Indian peoples of Chile and not only so not only the Amara, but also Mapuche and all the indigenous peoples in Chile, uh, they get they have people like yourself, you know that that are um, that are in that that um, and in that triangle, you know, indigenous environmental biologists as well as a, a, having a political uh, background or education because that can that can help a lot. Yeah, I appreciate your words and your approach and your energy, your time also for doing this uh, great conversation. Yeah, man. Uh, well, I, I would like to if you have a second or a group of conversations uh, in the nearby future, for sure. It's done. It's done. Um, uh, whenever you want to talk, uh, just flip me an email or send me an email or a WhatsApp message, and we'll we'll jump on a Zoom again and, and, we'll, and we'll, we'll 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 talk more. Right, yes, All right, man, Freddy. By Suma, as we say in Aymara. Thank you. Gracias. Malte Blue in my language, and thank you so much, man. And have a great uh, day over there. I, I led you with Tata Inti with the sun. Oh, man, that's amazing.